everyone, and welcome back. It's been a few weeks since my last video. Last time, I showed you how I made a gatehouse. It was one small part of a much larger world. Today, I'd like to show you some more of that world to show you how it's growing and developing. And we're going to look at some of the challenges and lessons that come with taking on a large scale project like this. So first off, what is this project? Well, it's a narrative-driven virtual reality video game. Set in a rich and immersive handcrafted world. It's got a story that's pretty sci-fi, but like a lot of my work, it draws from more than just one time period or one set of ideas. And over the year plus that it's going to take me to undertake this project, I'm going to show you a bit about the journey of its development and the lessons that I'm learning for world building, writing and game crafting along the way. And now let's get to it and see what's been added and designed over the last few weeks. So I think the thing a lot of you will have noticed first is that I've designed and built a fully modular manor house. It takes inspiration from a lot of the great country houses across Britain and Europe, but particularly the ones in Scotland, which I've always found have this fantastic blend of being really quite imposing and stark, but also very welcoming and warm. For this model, both the interior and exterior had a really quite large number of components for different types of walls and floors and ceilings, and I had to use a good number of modelling techniques to get them all made quickly in a reasonable amount of time. Now, like a lot of different modular modelling projects, it started off quite simply with just a few different wall types that I was going to scatter throughout the building. I already knew what the layout was going to be through a series of sketches and quick design exercises to figure out, using a very simple modular grid, how the building was going to work and how rooms were going to relate to each other. But like a lot of these kinds of projects, when you get into the modelling and you see all the different kinds of variations of parts that you're going to need to make each individual space work, and to make sure things don't seem too repetitive, it very quickly spirals, and you suddenly have a lot of different parts and modules that you're working with. But I find that to be okay. Richness and immersiveness comes first, and you just have to give parts like these sensible names and give them different groups and categories. If you can see there, I've got rows where each type of wall have different variations for different locations. And then on top of that, you have a number of modular parts that aren't gridded that you can just slap in wherever you need to to add even further variation and imperfection. Because this is an old country house after all. It needs to feel worn and torn apart and gnarled and rebuilt a hundred different times. It can't feel like it was just sketched out in a computer. And of course, the process for the exterior is quite similar as well. Figuring out a hierarchy of walls and masses and forms to help signal what the building does. Good architecture has this fantastic way of telling the user where to go and what to do and what to expect when you get up to it, while still being surprising and fantastical when it needs to be. I've always tried to learn from the masters from across the centuries to make sure that my own design work tells a story from any angle that you look at it. Now, the thing that I'm finding as I'm taking on this project is that the key to making sure it looks good and grows properly is iteration. Coming back to it time and time again to make further changes with a fresh mind and with new ideas, and testing it against your vision and what it needs to do to advance the game's story and narrative and experience. And each time you do this, it's going to creep a little bit closer to that goal. You can see here on the screen that a lot of what I'm doing is just slowly advancing the landscape in the area around focusing on different parts during different times when I've returned to the project. Each time a new set of elements is added that make the world more believable and realistic. And in a project like this, at a scale like this, it's far from done for quite a long time. And that's something that I'm having to learn to cope with, is to be able to defer that sense of anticipation of finishing. Because ultimately, you're not done until you're ready to ship. And until then, it's still very much a work in progress. This project is also reminding me of something I feel I've known for years. 
that indecision and perfectionism is one of your biggest hindrances and that it's going to be the enemy of progress if you can't focus on what you need to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis and where you need to be getting. And that's why iteration is so powerful, because it helps to remove that fear of permanence when you make a decision. You can always come back later and improve upon your work. You can always come back later and make another pass. You don't have to get it right the first time and it gives you the mental freedom to just do. Now, another interesting challenge that I've faced over the last few weeks has been scale. With a massive range, all the way from small things like door handles or objects that you hold, all the way up to entire buildings and landscape clusters. And it's been an interesting challenge trying to wrap my head around the way they interact and how much time needs to go into different sets of objects. But the solution to this is actually a really good one, and it's all about hierarchy of detail. You start big, at the big concept, at the big idea. You figure out how the world's going to look in big, broad brushstrokes. And then you work inwards, back to the smaller detail, to the tight ideas, to the intimate moments that's going to really make the game come to life. And then you just keep going. Stick to your plan, stick to what you need to make. Every day, keep producing, keep putting more in, and slowly things will begin to crystallize around you into a world. And that idea in your head will begin to take on its own character as it becomes a space in its own right. Now this idea can be applied to any number of projects. It doesn't just have to be design focused or video game focused. It's all about starting at the big concept and figuring out the tools and the actions you're going to need to take to make it happen. And I found it to be a really great way to progress a project when you're on a tight schedule. As long as you can remember that when you're inspired by something new that you didn't plan beforehand, you have the flexibility to add it if it's reasonable to do so. For me, a good example of this was the garden pavilion that I designed. It wasn't in the original scope of the game, but I really wanted a way to contrast all of the kind of traditional, old architecture that I was building with something slightly more modern. And so over the course of about three days, I sketched out how this pavilion was going to work in the story and I added it into the narrative and also the scope of production and then turned it around. I don't want to give away too much just yet because it's going to be really great when you experience it as a player, but I'm really proud of what this brings to this area of the game. And now I'm currently approaching the end of this content production run. I've got a tremendous amount more to do. But before I can progress any further, I have to focus really heavily on the mechanics of the game. Now you might have seen some of the gameplay mechanics I've been building into my games over the last few months if you've been following any of my videos. But the production version of this prototype mechanics is significantly more polished and allows the player to do a lot more and experience the game in a much more comfortable way. And now, for the long road ahead, I just have to maintain my focus and just keep working hard, which is okay. I've had a few lovely, really gratifying moments along the way so far, and some great constructive criticism of the prototypes and early concepts as well, as well as some great feedback. I'd like to show you one in particular, of a VR YouTuber trying the prototype a couple of months ago. Ben, if you ever find yourself watching this video, thank you very much for playing my game. Remind is a narrative puzzle exploration game. You are the investigator, tasked with checking on an old residence by the sea. As you arrive, you trigger an old AI, and a mystery begins to unfold. Hmm, what? Oh, yes. Hello there. Uh, welcome to... Well, I, I can't quite remember. The production quality in this game is through the roof. The visual design, the voice acting, all aspects of the production are done incredibly well. It's one of the best free games I've ever played. The environment and music alone... Now, one of the most important elements of early stage game development is testing your ideas and your concepts and your gameplay on players to see how they respond and seeing people have fun and enjoy it and, you know, want more of the experience is one of the most gratifying feelings you can have. Now, I'm not afraid to admit I teared up a little bit when I saw Ben play this game. I have a lot of respect for him as a YouTuber and for the coverage that he's given virtual reality over the years. The other important role of that prototype was for me to identify as many problems as I can 
so that I can solve them early into the production phase before bringing them into this much larger production and really kind of baking them into the core of the gameplay. And I think that's been a really useful exercise as well because it's given me things to work on and to polish and to progress as I move into the further stages of production. And for today, the final thing that I'd like to say is that the gameplay area is much larger than just this old country house. The game is, as I said, pretty sci-fi, but it draws from lots of different parts of history and lots of different sets of ideas and architecture to make the worlds that the player is going to explore. I hope that in the coming months, I'll be able to share more of both the story, the concept, the gameplay and the areas, but I don't want to give too much away, because I think a lot of what makes this game special so far is going to be the twists and turns and growth that the player should undergo along the way as they play the game. And going forward, let me know if you want to see more of the technicals of how I'm achieving the game production, or if you're wanting to see more of the game development and the concept and the writing and the challenges of trying to get this thing built. I would quite enjoy sharing both elements of those things with you all. And if you like video games, virtual reality, world building, storytelling, or just building things, stick around and ask me questions. Hopefully over the next few months I can share more of what I'm doing. But in the meantime, Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.